So welcome everybody, prenatal yoga, happy days. So we are going to start in a seated position. Um, so if you want to, if you've got a pillow or a couple of blocks, you can place one of those underneath your sit bones. We're going to place the left leg as if you were in a cross-legged position, so the left leg coming in, and then the right foot, just so it's a little more active around the hip, you're placing the right heel in front of the left knee, okay? If the brick's kind of in the way and you don't need it, it can go on just to the side and out the way. So just start by resting the hands on your legs and go ahead and close the eyes. And in your own time, taking a nice, easy breath all the way in through your nose. And to release, open your mouth, easy sigh, just letting that exhale, letting all of whatever's been occupying your day leave the body, the mind, through that exhale. Go ahead and take three more breaths in your own time. In the yoga practice, we have the Sanskrit language. I wanted to share with you this, these two words, stira and sukha. So stira in Sanskrit, Sanskrit uh, means stillness. And as you breathe now, just continue with your breathing. I want you to notice how with your exhalation, it does bring about this feeling of calming everything down a real sense of grounding, you feel how the body releases and with that release it opens. But essentially this idea of stillness, of quietness. With the exhale, the thoughts leave. With the exhale, we find stira, stillness. And then sukha, this other Sanskrit word, it means happiness or more energy. So sukha is linked to the inhalation, when we energize the body everything sort of expands outwardly, not just the front, but also think about, you know, three dimensional sides, top and bottom of the body. But this inhalation that brings in the vital energy, the prana, the life force. And so in the practice today, we'll be linking this idea of stira and sukha. So finding stillness, whilst also energizing the body, strengthening the body. And now just taking your hand, so one hand to your lower abdomen where your baby is, or where you're creating an environment for your baby to take seed and to nest, and your other hand just resting it at the center of the chest on your heart. start to feel the gentle rhythm of your heartbeat beneath your hand. Our heart, our centre of compassion, of love, of kindness. The Anahata, the colour associated with this chakra is green, so if you like to Visualize, you can visualize a nice emerald green just emanating front back of the heart center here. And as you connect to your heart and this energy of love, start to feel your energy, your love going down to where your other hand is placed, down to your baby down to your uterus, your womb, where you're creating this very warm and stable and loving environment. And a gentle 
just forming of a smile on your lips. Nothing huge, just that little feeling of energy of that smile. So that energy radiates from your heart down to your baby and through your whole body. And as we arrive into this beautiful practice that we get to share together, just putting in a little intention of knowing that this practice is for you. This practice is for your baby. And even just showing up and breathing, you've already done enough. Now you can keep your eyes closed, it's totally up to you. We're going to move the hands now, just take them onto the knees. Flex your feet now so we don't, that's just to help to protect the knees. And we're gonna move through just circling the, the torso around in one direction. So going nice and easy, breathing in, breathing out, either through the nose or more cooling through the mouth. Okay, so naturally when we, if you've done a guided meditation, you can usually hear the, sometimes they say how when you're following the breath and you breathe in through the nose, it's slightly cooler on inhale, warmer on exhale. So that's when we do our nasal breathing. Obviously when we breathe out through the mouth, that just helps to cool everything down. So judge in your practice, you may feel quite cold with this wet weather. So if you need to just do that nasal breathing throughout, that's absolutely fine. Okay, now we're just going to come back to centre. We're not going to do the other side just yet. We're going to move through some Sufi seats. So it's like cat and cow in a seated position. So as you breathe in, you're just opening the chest, draw the elbows in. So we activate the muscles around the scapula, your shoulder blades. And then as you exhale, straighten the arms, really sink back. So you roll back on the sit bones. Try and keep the belly quite soft though, okay? As you inhale, we're rocking forward. So awareness in the pelvis and those sit bones, exhale rocking back and just keep going through these Sufi stretches. Make sure the chin really releases down so we get that nice stretch through the back of the neck on your exhale and then conversely you're lifting the chin up so we stretch through the front of the neck on the inhale. As your awareness is in the pelvic floor, what we're doing, so really making sure that the weight is rocking on the front and back of your sit bones, this also helps to activate our pelvic floor muscle, which is very important for pre and postnatal. Okay, from here, just find a neutral, so in between that cat and that cow, that anterior and posterior pelvic tilt, raise both the arms all the way up, now, if you have your sort of end of second and third trimester, you, want, you may want your two bricks to come on top of the hands. We're going into an easy forward fold here. So the hands can come onto two bricks in front if coming too far forward is too much, option one. Option two, if you can go a little bit lower, you could place your head, your forehead really, on the brick and release the hands down. Option three, if you still have enough room, you can come all the way down and just hang out here. If you are hanging out here, just roll the head from side to side so we're releasing the cervical spine. I want everybody to feel their sit bones rooting down into the ground. Feel relaxed across your shoulders though and just keep that breath flowing in and out nice and evenly. So that's where we have this consistent balance of stira and sukha of inhale and exhale. Okay, then from here, just lifting the head up, walk the hands over to your left side, okay? Now, option one, if you want to, you can have a brick underneath the left hand. We're raising the right arm up for a side bend, okay? Option two, if you want to come a little bit lower, we'll release the brick and you could come down onto your forearm here. Whichever way you are using your variation, everybody root the right sit bone and hip bone down, okay? Because it's gonna wanna peel up off the floor, so make sure you plug it down into the ground. And then with your head, just let the left ear 
release down, okay? Check in with your feet, so we always want to have lots of dexterity in our toes and our feet, our little energetic plugs that plug into the earth's energy. Good, and then just reversing that, so we're gonna sweep that top hand down, come back into that forward fold just for a moment here, so hands can just rest on the legs if you need to, on the knees if you need to. Gently move the head from side to side. And then just come all the way back up to your seat. We're gonna switch the legs. So whichever leg you had in front, we're switching them around, okay? Just make sure that the, so I've got my left foot in front, the left heel is right in front of the knee so we get that little bit of openness around the hips. We'll start with our circular rolls again. So this time going anti-clockwise. So this is a really nice one to do. So any of these kind of movements around the sacrum are really good for the, so if you think about the sacrum, it's this triangular bone at the base of the spine. And if we spend a lot of our day just in one position, so a sitting position, the muscles around it can get quite tight, okay? And so if the muscles are tight, then there's just not much movement. Now, a lot of people kind of think of bones as just rigid and still, but actually all the bones, they're also, they have this, this stira and this suka, this kind of movement and this flow. So just loosening the muscles around the sacrum allow that kind of, it's like a wave of the sacrum to start to flow and then that will flow up your spine and also keep your spine nice and healthy. Let's come to center and go through those Sufi seats. So hands on the knees as you breathe in, spine opening up on the front body, shoulders draw back. As you exhale, straighten the arms and then just feel how you sink, sink back on those sit bones. And then as you breathe in, rolling forward, check again with the feet, nice spread toes. And just keep going forwards and backwards. When you're going back, that's your exhale. And when you're coming forward, that's your inhale. So just nice, easy warm up. So we just feel into our body how we're feeling this evening. How our breath is, if it's quite easy or if it's a little bit jagged. Go ahead and do two more of these. And then meeting back at Center. You may want your two bricks as we're moving into our forward fold, both arms lift up. Just pause, turn the little fingers slightly in. So notice how this just kind of integrates around the shoulders. And then exhale, coming forward, nice and easy, hands on two bricks, hands on the earth as you please. Release your head, also release your jaw and your cheeks. So we're nice and soft around the head and the neck area. This is where we tend to just naturally hold a lot of tension if we're looking at a screen, so like starey eye screen. We just wanna keep those eyes, give them a, a break here. So whenever you feel comfortable to, you can just close your eyes in the practice. So we're going over to the right now. So you can take your hat, your brick over to the right side as you place your right hand there. Left arm sweeps over and we come into our side bend here. Again, releasing the ear down towards the ground, releasing your left sit and hip bone down towards the ground. Center of the chest turning up rather than collapsing down. Beautiful. And then up we come, deep breath in. We're going straight up. Join the palms above your head and then bend the elbows so the thumbs come between the shoulder blades. I want you to squeeze your upper arm bones in towards your head and really try and lift the front of the, the uh, triceps up towards the sky. Good, on your next inhale, arms lift all the way up. And then turn your palms to face out. Keep the thumbs so they're on top as we make a huge circle with the arms. So your palms stay facing out, thumbs will stay on top. And that's a really nice one for around the shoulders, good. And then from here, hands can stay on the ground. Just uncross the legs, have the feet uh, wide, about as wide as the width of your mat. And then we'll just move the knees from side to side. So just loosen up around those hip joints there. 
So whenever you are going around the, um, the knees, it's always, I mean, naturally just feet nice and wide, okay? As it just takes any kind of um, rotation or twist away from the lower part of the abdomen. Okay, from here, we're actually going to come into our Malasana Yogi squat. So take your feet nice and wide, toes turned out, heels in, and then just bringing yourself forward. Those of you that want to, if you remember last class, we did have a brick underneath the bottom. That's optional here. Okay, we're not going to be here as long as we were last, last time. But I do want you to bring the elbows to the inner edges of the knees. Bring the wrists in line with the elbows and just notice how when you bring the wrists in line with the elbows, that's helping to turn the knees out, okay? Now, what can happen here? This is a classic one where we do just kind of hang out quite a lot and the weight may start to collapse on the inner edges of the feet. Instead, I want you to really press out with the outer edges of your hips and try and get the weight on the outer edges of your feet here, okay? So it's your muscles opening the knees out rather than your elbows. And you can do a little test here, just see how far you want to go. You could take the elbows just on top of the knees, like so. Do a little peace sign or a little wave. And then even more advanced, so just check in with the feet, check you're not collapsing, you could raise the arms up away from the knees there. So really having to work the knees out, lift the pelvic floor up. Very good, then elbows tap back down onto the knees. Bring the elbows to the inner edge of the knees, hands there. Good. From here, fingertips down, turn your toes forward so they face the wrist. Keep a little bend in your knees, feet are wide, grab hold of either elbow and sway from side to side. So have a nice forward fold here. Just releasing any pressure around the neck. Keep that bend in the knees and just enjoy swaying from side to side. Maybe noticing a little bit of fire in the legs already. Okay, then we're going to come back down. So looking at your feet, turn the toes out. Come into a deep chair through down into our malasana. So you sink down, arms up. Good. Then bring the hands all the way down onto the ground. Bring your bottom to the earth. Second, third trimester, if the bump's too big and you don't feel comfortable lying down on your mat, this is gonna be your variation. Left leg straight, right foot on inner thigh. Those of you who feel comfortable lying down, you're gonna come and lie down on your mat, hug your right knee in, but you're hugging the right knee in towards the armpit. It's more over to the right, okay? Everybody flex both your feet. And then those of you who are lying on the floor, you're going to come into half happy baby, taking the outer edge of the right foot with the right hand. Left hand can be on the left hip bone, okay? Those of you sitting up, sole of the right foot is on the thigh. Now this is where you may want to grab your belt. You could place the belt around the widest part of your foot, holding on here, or just a very slight extension forward from the crown of the head and the chest, okay? depending how much um, pull you want to get around the back of that left calf there. So you could hold on here, like so. But obviously not coming down too low, so we don't squish baby. So those of you who are sitting up, you're gonna stay in that variation. Others who are lying down, what you can do, you can stay in your half happy baby, or if you feel comfortable, just starting to straighten your right leg out to the side as you breathe in. And then exhale back into your half happy baby. Inhale, the leg doesn't have to go completely straight, so straight, straight-ish. Exhale, half happy baby, and just do two more. Straightening le the leg as you breathe in, make sure your feet stay nice and spread so there's activity in both legs. Exhale, bending. And then one more, inhale, leg up. Exhale, bend. Okay, those of you lying on the floor, you're now going to come into full happy baby. So the left leg moves in as well, bringing the hand, left hand to the outer edge of the left foot. For those who are sitting up, you're going to come into your butterfly pose. So the left leg, you're bringing the sole of the left foot to the right, interlace the hands, and you can do little butterfly knees if you like, okay? Okay. 
Okay, if you are in full happy baby, you're going to keep hold of the left leg, release the right leg forward and down, right hand on your hip bone. So just staying in your half happy baby for a few breaths. Butterfly pose, people, you're going to now come into your Janushasasana on the other side. So right leg straighten, sole of the left foot on your inner thigh. Again, really draw the right toes towards you, root the heel away from you. And then as you walk your hands forward, make sure that you're coming forward from the centre of the chest, crown of the head, and the belt can go round the widest part of your right foot. Those of you in half happy baby on the floor, again, moving with the breath in to straighten, straightish that left leg. And then exhale back into your half happy baby. And again, working with the breath aware that the body is more flexible than usual. So go nice and easy. Good, once you have done four, those of you who are doing your half happy babies, you're going to place the left foot down, also bend the right knee so the right foot is down. Now a classic way to come out when we're lying on the floor is to move to the left. You press from the left side up to your seat. From Janushasasana, we're now also going to end up how we all were. So knees bent, hands out to the side, swing the knees from left to right, right to left. Okay. All right, then we're going to come back into our Malasana Yogi squat. So looking at your feet, heels in, toes out. The feet are wide. Start to walk the hands forward. And then again, I want us to go through that idea of, so this is us kind of like just hanging out. Think about pelvic floor activating and an imaginary thread drawing you up. Elbows can rest on the knees, elbows can lift up and then press the backs of the knees out. Okay, so super, super strong. Good, and then exhale coming down, hands can come on the floor. Again, turn your toes forward, keep the knees bent and opposite forearm in front as you sway from side to side, left to right, right to left. And then settling at centre, keep the feet hips distance apart. Release your arms down so they just hang alongside the body. Take a really nice deep bend in the knees, root down through your big toes and the pad underneath the big toes as we come through a chair pose. And then press, as you press to stand, squeeze the legs, squeeze the bum, arms above the head. Turn the palms to face out. Big circle with those arms, keeping the thumbs on top and the palms facing out. Then bring the hands to the heart, right palm pressing against left palm in an equal relationship. So again, finding this state of calm and of balance, especially as throughout a pregnancy, the body starts to change. Just know that the body is just so incredible and you really want to embrace this change. And that's why the yoga practice can be such a great one to come to as it just brings you back to this place of balance and connecting to yourself. So let's all take a deep breath all the way in through the nose. If the eyes are closed, on your exhale, open the eyes, release the arms alongside the body, and then big breath in, reach the arms high to the sky. Exhale, slight bend in those knees as we come down and into our forward fold. Inhale, lunge your right leg back, pause here. So you may want to take a break underneath your right hand, okay? Now, looking at your body, just really press through your back leg so the heel is over the ball of the foot. Then looking at your left foot, turn the left toes as if they were turning out to about 10 o'clock, okay? Peel the inner line of your foot away from the mat, okay? So I'm on the outer edge of my left foot. And then we're just going to raise that left arm up towards the sky, okay? Now, what I want you to make sure you're not doing is just kind of hanging out here, okay? Instead, really imagine that there's something pulling the back of your right thigh up towards the sky and lifting those fingertips up towards the sky. As you exhale, lower the right knee down onto the earth and then bring the left hand onto the thigh as you turn your left toes once more to face forward, okay? 
Option now, we're going to lift the back toes away from the earth. So option one, you can just keep the left hand coming back up and towards the sky. Notice how my back toes are flexed. Option two, you can reach the hand around and grab the outer edge of the foot, okay? Spread the toes and then that supporting hand, right hand presses into the earth. Notice the hips are staying forward and you're just opening across the left shoulder here, okay? Good, release that back foot, bring the left hand back forward. If you've got your hand on a brick, move the brick out the way. Both palms on the mat, toe heel that left foot to the center, right foot comes down, right knee comes down. Lift the left leg all the way up to the sky now, open the hip. So stack the left hip above the right. As you exhale, bend the left knee, point the toes towards your left butt cheek, okay? So we're opening across the lower part of the body here really pressing through the arm bone. So again, try not to collapse the chest. Push so your chest lifts away from the ground rather than dipping down. As you breathe in, straighten your left leg, level out your hips so the left leg is going straight back behind you. Exhale, step your left foot to your left wrist and lower the right knee to the earth. Get your two bricks if you would like them for your half Hanuman. So the bricks can be either side of the left foot you're going to shift your hips back, straighten the left toes away from the floor. So we come into our Ardha Hanuman. So we're getting a stretch through the back of the left calf and left thigh here, okay? Some people like to do a full Hanuman. Because of relaxing, I would advise that you, if you really wanted to do a full Hanuman, you can, but I would do a supported one, okay? So you place your bolster, underneath the back thigh and you've got this idea that you're pulling the legs towards one another to work the pelvic floor. So option one or two here and then from your half Hanuman just start to shift the weight forward, back toes can tuck, blocks are going to come out the way and come back into your lunge okay and immediately draw that back thigh up so we're active, we're not hanging down. Walk your hands over to the right, and then what I want you to do is keep your right heel lifted as you shift your weight to the right, left toes lifted, okay? All right, so listen carefully. If you've got your bottom facing towards me, listen carefully. So right heel is lifted. We're now going to place the right heel down. So the right foot is flat. The left leg is straight with the toes lifted. Take your right arm to the inner edge of your right knee, fingertips on the floor left arm lifts up to the sky, okay? And then again, try and lift a little away from the floor rather than just collapsing down. You're using your right arm that's on the inner edge of the knee to open the knee out to the side. Think about our malasana, we don't want the weight collapsing on the inner edge of the foot, we want it on the outer edge of the foot. Top hand, left hand comes down onto the floor. Come through center, turning your toes in and your heels out. You may want two bricks underneath your hands here, okay? We're moving into Prasarita Padottanasana, wide leg forward fold. Start by coming to a half lift, crown of the head extends forward. Check that your hips are in line with the heels, not shifting back behind them. And then exhale, just lowering down. So choose the height of your bricks. You may not want them at all. If you want to go even deeper, it's nice to take the hands around the backs of the legs, holding onto the ankles and release your head to the earth. Now, totally optional, and it's absolutely fine to do a tripod headstand here. If you had a handstand press, you could do that here also. But like I say, you, if you were learning handstand and you were doing kick-ups, I would advise not to. You're pushing off, it's too much impact. So inversions are amazing, but again, if you have it already in your practice. When you're pregnant, it's not the time to learn something new and give it a go, okay? So just really judge what works for you in your body. From your forward fold here, let's all meet in a halfway lift. So coming into a halfway lift. Imagine there's a magnet putting your legs towards one another so you're stable in the legs as you take your hands to your hips. Rise all the way up to stand as you breathe in. Draw the heels in. Woo! And then we'll sit down into goddess pose. 
Yeah, so sinking down into goddess pose. Again, one of these poses where if we're not working our medial column and the muscles around our hip joints, the knees will collapse in, the weight will fall onto the inner arches of the feet. So really press the outer edges of the knees to the little toes and the weight to the outer edges of your feet there. Let's raise the arms all the way up, big breath in. Exhale, move the hands down your center line. Then take the hands to the thighs. Now, like I say, we don't want to be doing twists around the lower part of the tummy in our pregnancy, okay? What we're doing now is we're rotating, we're gonna rotate the shoulder and use the heel of the hand to open around the hip, but you'll notice I'm keeping my tummy and everything facing forward, so not getting the twist down below, okay? So start by taking your left hand just above the knee crease, not on the left knee. Your left knee will come to the midline of the body. Notice my hips are still facing forward. And then just encourage the left knee open with that left palm, okay? So it's all about the leg here, not about the lower abdomen. And then come back through center and go to the other side. So shoulder on the right side comes to the midline, right heel of the hand, pressing the knee out. Good, come back to center. And then raise the arms up, straighten the legs, squeeze your bottom. Turn your left toes to face the front of the mat. Bend your left knee, step with control, your feet hips distance to the top of your mat. So nice, light step, very good. Little challenge of the balance there. Release the arms by your side. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Ground down through your feet as you sigh out through the mouth. So we're going for the left side now. Arms lift to the sky, big breath in. Little bend in those knees as you hinge at the hips, fold over the legs, releasing your head down. Come into a flat back, so slide the hands up the shins, bending the knees here. Exhale back into your forward fold. Inhale, deep bend in the knees for your chair pose, okay? So imagine you're always holding a brick between the legs. Exhale, place the hands down. This time your left leg is lunging back, okay? So with your lunge here, again, lifting. Imagine you had a thread drawing the sacrum up, drawing the back of the thigh up. Block underneath the left hand for those of you that would like it. Really drive through that left heel as well as the right arm lifts to the sky. So we're opening the chest. We're not twisting around the navel. The legs are really hugging in, so we're rock solid around the legs and also that left glute, your left butt cheek is squeezing. Good, now take the hand down as you toe heel your right foot a little bit wider, turn the toes now to two o'clock, lift the inner arch of the foot off and again, lifting the arm to the sky. Keep driving through that back leg before releasing the left knee down onto the earth. Now you can keep your front foot in that position if you would prefer when we reach for the back foot. It's totally up to you, okay? Or you can do as we did on the other side, bring the toes a little bit further forward, all right? Just sort of creates a bit more space if you do, if when you're in like second and third trimester with the toes turned out, it's just a bit more space for baby there. Good, release the back leg down, cartwheel the arm forward. We're going into our open hip downward facing dog. So lifting the left knee off the floor as you sweep your right leg to the sky, stack the hips, and then bend the right knee, point the right toes to the left glute. Really lift your right knee up towards the sky. Check that your head is nice and relaxed, giving a little shake, yes and no. Then straighten the right leg, level your hips so we have a neutral pelvis before lunging your right foot behind your right wrist. Two blocks if you need for your half Hanuman. So the left knee comes down, top of the left foot comes down, shift the hips back, draw your right toes up towards you, okay? And then notice naturally we kind of wing our bottom to the left. You want to stay right along that midline, so as if your mat had a line right down the center, you want the weight even on left and right side, good. Spread those right toes. And just enjoy that nice stretch through the back of the right calf and hamstring here. 
And then from here, we shift forward. So we're coming into a lunge, right foot comes down, tuck the left toes, lift the left knee. Then we're walking the hands all the way around. So we come to our Skandarsan pose on the left side. So you're lifting your left heel, bringing your hips down to the left heel, straightening your right leg, spreading and lifting your right toes, okay? Then taking your left hand, it's on the inner edge of the leg, fingertips on the floor, right arm to the sky. And then notice, can you kind of see if I just lift my hip just a little bit away so I'm having to hold myself here rather than hang out, okay? You can play with both. Just make sure that you're not always hanging out, okay? So we always do find that strength because when our muscles are strong around the joints, they help support them. Let's come into our wide leg forward fold. So right foot, right hand down, moving on your feet. So now we come to our wide legged stance with the toes and heels out. Hands under the shoulders, halfway lift as you breathe in, really pull your chest towards me. And then as you breathe out, fold down, find the position of the hands that suits you best. If you are coming into your tripod headstand, your hands will be in line with the feet, your head weight in front. Good, and just in your forward fold, those of you who are staying in Prasarita, just slowly or slightly rather, just feeling a little bit of traction so the weight is further forward in the feet rather than just dumping in the back of the legs there, okay? Easy breath. And then halfway lift, inhale. Stay in your half lift as you bring your hands to your hips. Exhale. Again, the legs hug in as we rise all the way up to stand, breathing in. Heels in, toes out, hands to your heart. Exhale. Lift the center of the chest up towards the sky. And then imagine you're sliding down a wall so your back, your butt, and the back of your head would touch that wall, okay? Your feet may need to wiggle a little bit wider. And now we're just going to do quite a silly move but it's very good arms out to the side and we're just gonna go from side to side looking so good and we're just shifting from side to side this is kind of like Sebastian off the little mermaid you can even do like floaty seaweed arms as well if you like looking really good <laughs> and then pause at center reach those arms all the way up Strong through those legs, exhale, come up to stand. Stay standing, reach the fingertips super high. Turn the palms out, big circle with the arms all the way around till they come to your hips. Your left foot is forward, slightly bend the left knee so you step with control, your feet hips distance to the top of your mat. Take the hands, one hand to your heart, one hand to your baby, close the eyes. Breathe. Finding the centering of your mind through the practice, through the breath. And just really feeling proud of your body. This amazing body that is going through all sorts of different changes. But by coming back to the mat, back to the breath, we stay centered. Let's bring the hands now to the center of the chest, opening the eyes. Look down at your feet and we're going to take our feet into that wide Malasana squat. So heels are about as wide as the mat, toes, I have my feet just off the width of the mat. Let's reach the arms all the way up as we breathe in. And then exhale, coming down so the hands can join. So then when we come all the way down, the elbows come to the inner knees, the wrists are in line with the elbows. Not here for long, we're going to place the hands behind us and very carefully come down to our seat. Lovely stuff. Now with your, our next pose, if you have a bolster, we're going to go into a supported Virasana, okay? This is a really nice one for the quads, but we don't want to do have too much pull on the knees. So really stack up as high as, um, as you can. So I'm going to place two bricks. This is where my head is going to be on my bolster like so. So if we start in an all four, you're going to be shifting back. 
It's nice to get the thumbs right at the back of the knee so you can just iron out sort of the belly of the calf out to the side. I'm a little bit too close. And then your bottom will come down in front of the bolster. Some people it's a little bit tight on the back. So it's nice to also, if you have an extra block or a cushion, put that under your bottom there, okay? Before you lie down, just check the tops of the feet are on the mat, knees together, and then slowly, slowly, just coming back over your bolster here. Again, if it feels too far back, you need to get more height in the upper portion. So you could even get another pillow where your head is going to be, you could place another cushion. So knees are together, you're kneeling, and then lying back on the bolster. Make sure your head is supported. So go ahead and close your eyes. And then go ahead and just rest your hands, just as we did when we were standing, one hand on the heart, one hand on your baby, on your tummy. And just going right back to the beginning of class, when we were seated in our meditation, And just feeling the work that you have given, not only yourself, but this dynamic movement that creates all these endorphins that make you feel good and positive and happy, your body, and then also in turn your baby. Connecting together with this one breath. So here, just slowing down your breathing. Feeling the beat of your heart beneath your hand. And sending that energy of love from your heart down to your baby. Connecting to once more Stira and Sukha. Stillness, silence, a moment of calm. And Sukha, that energy of aliveness, space, happiness. So if you feel comfortable in this position, feel free to stay here for your Shavasana. If you need to shift, change the hands or the body in any way, please feel free to. So you are comfortable to rest for our relaxation. And just know that there is nowhere else you need to be. You're in exactly the right place. Stay here, stay resting until you hear my voice again.
until your mind has drifted. Stay rested in Shavasana. But start to feel the movement of your breath. Begin to increase the length, increase the depth of each new cycle of breath. Keeping this internal awareness and very slowly in your own time, no rush, start to put little movements into your fingers and then you can go ahead and bend the knees, straighten the legs out in front of you if you had butterfly knees, lift the arms up over your head. And then re-bending the knees, arms alongside the body, so the feet are flat on the earth. Hands are also on the ground. And then very carefully, just press straight up to your seat, keeping the eyes closed. Resting the hands, one hand on your tummy, on your baby, and the other hand once more at your heart. So life really is about cultivating this state of balance. And coming back to the practice, to our breath, to our body and our mind. It's incredible how much we do restore. How much goodness we give all three, the body, the mind and the breath. So just take a moment now to put gratitude into your body, your mind for also making the decision to roll out the mat and arrive. And to your breath, your breath that is always there, always moving in and out, but just putting a little extra awareness into keeping this very steady and calm breathing with you throughout the rest of your evening. And now moving the hand from your tummy, from your baby up to your heart, just resting it on top of the other hand. And another Sanskrit word, which is so common in the yoga practice, the mantra or chant om, so what I want you to feel now is at your heart, you'll, you'll feel when we chant the, the vibration beneath your hands and just feel that vibration that your body, your cells is creating with this sound and feel that this sound that is coming out from you, from your heart center is just a positive, happy energy that we are giving back to our beautiful, amazing planet and mother earth, our greatest mother. So. Let's all together take a deep breath in through the nose. Oh. With your exhale, bowing your head towards your lifted chest. Little smile on your lips there. Thank you so, so much for joining. Namaste.